Welcome back to Beer VTV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and today we're playing with a lens that we've actually been wanting to review for quite some time. It's finally gonna happen. It's the Canon RF 16 millimeter F 2.8. Now, what's really amazing about this is, yes, companies have made ultra wide primes before, but not this compact and certainly not for mirrorless and certainly not at such a low price point. So today we're gonna be shooting this on the Canon R5 just to push the lens a little bit. We're gonna hopefully find out is this lens just too good to be true, or is this an affordable, compact little gem that deserves a spot in your camera bag? A Calgary icon returns. <laughs> I never left. Well, I want to get the shot looking through the EVF, but I don't want my toes in the shot. So I'm, you know, being graceful. Look at that. Woo! Now in this shot, Jordan says it looks like I have angel wings, but he wants to remind you, the audience, that I am certainly no angel. Let's get on to the handling on this lens. Very compact, 165 grams. That's basically a 12th of a knock. So it's very compact and lightweight. Now, because it is compact, that means we get a small filter thread, 43 millimeters, but it also means that the lens itself doesn't have a lot of space for controls. So I effectively have one control ring and a selector switch to go between focus or control. I guess that would basically be my autofocus, manual focus control as well, right? I mean, click it forward and I've got manual focus, click it back and that disengages that. I'm actually not using using the control ring very much though. I find an R5 bodies, I wanna set aperture and shutter speed with the dials on the body, but it is nice that we do have the option there. So this gives us a good opportunity to test out the close-up capabilities here. Often compact wide angles can actually let you get really close. This is no exception. I mean, I'm only getting about a quarter life size reproduction. That's not amazing, but I'm getting within five inches from the sensor. That is pretty incredible. And it really lets you have a lot of fun playing with perspective, getting really close to objects. It's quite fun to see on a lens like this. So we got a really nice sunny day for a change, and that gives us a good opportunity to test both flare and sun stars, two things which are very important on ultra wide landscape lenses. So shooting towards the sun, actually, first off, very impressed. Some loss of contrast, not major, but really no ghosting, no flare. It's handling that really nicely. The sun stars, I thought for such an affordable lens would suck, but they're actually the opposite. As you can see here, they're quite beautiful. Now, yes, this is an ultra wide, so small specular points of light will be quite small, but if you were doing a cityscape full of street light, or you know anything like that, you can get some really nice dramatic sun stars out of this lens. So of course we have an affordable lens. It means we have an affordable autofocusing motor for said lens. It's an STM motor. I mean, I'm finding though, it's not having to move a lot of glass. So it's very quick from near to far focus and back. I mean, there's no problem there, but I am hearing sometimes a little bit of noise, a little bit of a clicking noise. I think maybe in a vlogging situation that might be an issue, which otherwise this lens would be absolutely ideal for, but Again, it's not a huge amount of noise. Now with an affordable wide angle like this, is there a weakness when it comes to breathing? Unfortunately, yes. And that's where, you know, as you focus the lens from near to far, you'll actually see your field of view change quite a bit. For video, this means your focus poles are gonna have a lot of breathing as you can see here in this example. But I could also see it being an issue for landscape photography or even the macro kind of stuff that we talked about where this lens can focus really close. If I wanted to do focus stacking where I'm moving my focus through different planes and then I'm gonna stack it all together and post afterwards, my field of view again is gonna change so much much, I am gonna to have to account for that. Okay, let's talk about bokeh next, because surely a lens this affordable that has done so well as it has throughout all the other tests has gotta suck here, right? Well, no, we gotta keep waiting actually, because the bokeh is really quite nice. Uh, you can see here shooting F 2.8 in the corners with specular highlights wide open, little bit of cat's eye, really not much. And that goes away almost immediately as you begin to stop down. When the lens is stopped down here, you can see it at F4, our specular highlights are still nice and round, no polygonal shape whatsoever. The only thing I will say about the bokeh is it does have a bit of a soap bubble effect for sure, and that sometimes gives us harsh transitions from in focus to out of focus. But considering that we're looking at an ultra wide where our transitions are gonna be, you know, quite subtle, it really has really beautiful bokeh rending overall. So I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna complain about. I gotta keep looking. So, I mean, you could watch Eternal Sunshine, one of the greatest movies of all time on the big screen and support an independent theater at the same time. Or you could just click on the card Jordan's put above and watch our rendition with Nichols, which is like 10 times better. 10? A tenth. A tenth, oh. 
Loca time, longitudinal chromatic aberration. This is where we get those color fringes in the foreground and background out of focus areas. Not something we'd honestly worry about too much on an ultra wide lens like this, but again, if it's present, it's very hard to fix in post. On this lens, as you can see in the example, there's a little bit, you can see a sort of green fringing the background, a little bit of magenta fringe in front, but again, it's pretty minor, very well controlled, exactly what we expected. So let's take a look at our lens chart here, talk about sharpness. So first off, in the center focused at f2.8, you can see not bad for detail, but when we stop down at 5.6, there's a noticeable improvement. So looking at those corners though, they're very soft, wide open. Stopping down to 5.6 is what you're gonna wanna do to improve them. I think this lens, if you're gonna shoot on something like a higher resolution R5 body, if you want maximum detail, you'll definitely wanna stop down. But I'm certainly not upset with the shots that I'm getting at f2.8. So I don't know how else to put it. I mean, this Canon RF 16 mm f2.8 is a affordable little gem. I mean, what can we really complain about? could be sharper, wide open, autofocus motors maybe a little bit noisy, but otherwise this is actually an awesome little travel walk around lens. This would be a great landscape lens, fun in the city if you're shooting architecture. I mean, really, this is a fantastic lens for such little money. We have filters in our bags that are more expensive. The bag is more expensive than this lens in a lot of cases. You know, what else strikes me about this is, at least for first party lenses, this is the way to go, right? Unless you really want an ultra wide zoom for RF, this makes a ton of sense. And yeah, you could look at adapting older SLR lenses, but they're bulkier, they're not optimized for the mirror's body. You gotta use adapters. I mean, this is just a no brainer. Now there are some third party lenses out there, you know, stuff that even goes wider, 14 mil f 2.8s and stuff like that. But those are largely gonna be manual focus only only no electrical connection and you know honestly they're in a lot of cases more expensive and certainly Canon's not gonna help any third-party manufacturers going forward so I really think that this represents very interesting very unique value on the market right now and hey if you're a Canon APS-C RF user like maybe you're gonna pick up a brand new R50 or something like that this would also be a really fun lens you're still gonna get you know just below a 26 millimeter which is very useful and again it's compact and it's affordable so it's not gonna be a burden to carry around so I hope this helps you guys decide whether this is a good lens for you, but I really do think it probably is. If you're a Canon RF user, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Remember, you can always check out the samples that we shot, deepuv.com, link in the description below. Don't forget to check out Eternal Sunshine as well as mine, Wood and Nichols. You owe it to yourself. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.